Well, hello out there, planet Earth, and happy Friday. Great to be back on the airwaves to wrap up August, especially following a big Yankees win. It's Friday, and it's always Friday with me, Stephen Fry, your SMB guy. ICYMI, or in case you missed it, SMB stands for Small and Medium-Sized Business. For the last 20 years, I've been a consultant for SMBs, a voice and a sounding board for business leaders advocating on their behalf, their employees too. I believe very strongly, folks, in sharing stories, providing perspective, and creating connection. So every single Friday, you could find me right here on talkradio.myc doing just that, lending what's left of my mind and my voice to this radio show, where I interview SMB leaders as well as their trusted advisors. One thing that I've noticed over the years, everybody, some of the best thought leadership for SMBs actually happens on Friday, right about that time we feel the freedom of the weekend coming. However, we're also anxious to start the weekend. I know I am because I'm leaving for vacation tomorrow. These crucial pearls of wisdom, they're often overlooked, they're forgotten in favor of our fun weekend activities and our freedom from work. Here on the show, we take advantage of that weekend freedom and clarity, and we discuss popular topics that are on the minds of SMB leaders and their trusted advisors. The name of the show, people, not just to play on words. My last name means free in German. Nice little tidbit for you. Today's episode of Always Friday brought to you by SDA Well. Wealth Strategies, a boutique financial services firm in Hudson Valley, New York, offering personal wealth management and comprehensive business solutions for its clients. SDA stands for Simplifying Financial Lives, Designing Financial Strategies, and Advocating to Implement Them. SDA offers a concierge experience for individuals and businesses, the firm's highest priority, always the client's best interests, and empowering them to do, be consciously proactive and to thrive today, tomorrow, and beyond. To learn more, visit SDA Wealth Strategies dot com she's back no more facetime my family is reunited once again my daughter is home from camp very emotional very exciting great to have her back in the house although a lot noisier she's a bit of a chatterbox uh we are leaving for vacation tomorrow with my brother's family and my parents very excited to go down to wildwood crest hang out by the jersey shore but uh we're going to talk about a little bit of a different prescription today in our topic of conversation i'm doing the prescription for sunshine the next few days. Today we're going to talk about a prescription for cost containment. Most SMB owners, they have three big expenses on their mind at all times. Business operating expenses, taxes, and health insurance. Health insurance obviously can be a very complex topic even to some insurance professionals. We're entering a time of year when many SMBs, they're evaluating their benefits and looking for ways to potentially save money moving forward. One component of the insurance programs that brokers and clients might overlook are the copays that are related to the prescription drugs. Certain medications, they can be very expensive, lots of opportunities today to institute programs that on the back end that you don't really feel too much that actually might help you mitigate some of the costs. Well, today we're gonna to hear from an insurance professional who has embraced this concept and made it part of his daily discussions in his space. Not only has it been a differentiator, but also a phenomenal way to show business owners and their employees some much needed savings. Talk is cheap. We know that we're on talkradio.myc. We don't want this to just be talk. Let's use the insight we get on the business landscape and create some impact on Monday morning. It's far too often in my travels, the businesses are focused on the product that's going to solve all of their problems. The new app, the magic wand, the shiny new mousetrap. One thing that I see every single day, products change. Whether you're talking your personal or your business life, there is no substitute for having the right people, the right trusted advisors around you, and keeping a focus on an excellent process that's going to help you achieve your goals. You do that, the right products will be there when you need them. Everything begins and ends with the people. So I'll take a breath in the spirit of surrounding yourself with the right people. We have a great show for you here today. Our special guest is Philip Grisafi, Vice President at, of Business Development at Risk Strategies. So a little bit about Phil. He is a veteran of the United States Air Force. He has over 35 years experience in multiple areas of the human resources and employee benefits field. He has served as a consultant, corporate benefits manager, and as a producer for a major New England insurer. Sorry about the New York Jersey, bud. His current focus is helping his corporate clients with strategic benefit issues by helping them put in place the benefits that are appropriate to attract and retain quali qualified employees. The focus is to help them where appropriate to transition to optimal funding methods such as reference-based pricing and using captive insurance companies. 
all while taking advantage of various cost containment strategies that are available in the marketplace. Testimonial from one of his clients, we were struggling to keep up with the never ending cost increases on our health insurance plan. When Philip introduced this program to us, I saw a way to get out from under that constant pressure and save some money. The plan has accomplished exactly what they said it would and our employees are very happy with it. So clearly, Phil has some phenomenal experience in this space, very ideal person to chat with about this topic. As always, we will discuss my favorite questions. Who is your favorite movie or TV show character? What's your favorite movie or TV show? What's your favorite musical instrument? And who's the artist you'd like to hear play it? Uh, joining me from his home base on the Merrimack River in sunny New Hampshire, most likely disgusted at my wearing my Yankees jersey, Phil, welcome to Always Friday. Great to see you, my friend. Nice to be, nice to be here, Steve. Uh, actually, I'm originally from Brooklyn. So uh, I'm a big Yankees fan, a Rangers fan, a Giants fan. Love uh, New York sports still, even to this day, even though I'm in a sea of New Englanders. Uh, <laughs> Music to my ears. It's rare that you get someone who resides in New England who will testament to that. There you go. <laughs> but and, we and have – go ahead. I, I say, as you indicated, uh, you know, I was born and raised in Brooklyn and uh, single mom, four kids, and uh, – topic today of student loan debt uh the thing I, I had i went into the air force so i can go to college so uh, i was one of those people and the indirect way the government did finance my uh, my education so <laughs> i have no complaints of what's going on out there right now maybe the way they're handling it is but uh you know the reality is is that uh, i had to do what i had to do to get to get to school and that's what you have to do well, aside from uh, being a member of the Air Force, we do have some similarities in our resumes. I'm a big fan of the work that you've been doing and have thought for some time that there, there needs to be just a little bit more education, especially around this topic for most, most folks out there, even insurance professionals, not just the clients. But tell us a little bit about your journey. How'd you get to where you are today? Well, I went, after I got out of the Air Force, um, I went back to New York, started working uh, down on Wall Street uh, for Merrill Lynch, worked for Merrill Lynch for a while. And uh, just recently got married, and um, two years into the marriage, uh, New York was kind of what it is today—a pit. Uh, a lot of a lot of stuff going on in the early '90s, and uh, so uh, my wife and I, at the time packed up our bag, our dog, and our cat. We had no children, and we moved to Hampton Beach, New Hampshire. And the reason why I picked New Hampshire was there's no sales or income tax up here. We had neither, and uh, we were getting crushed in taxes. So we came here, and that was 32 years ago. And uh, I'm still up here, and there's still no sales or income tax here in New Hampshire. That's how that's the journey that got me. No one in their life ever says they're going into the insurance business. You don't go to school to become in the insurance business. It's something you you either fall into or you know somebody that wants you to do it. And uh, I met some people along the way that just dragged me into it, and that's how I got into what I do. Yeah, it's. Uh, I I would agree that you don't always go into it <laughs> planning to be an insurance professional. It's something that you end up falling into, but like many things out there, it's not so much you know about what you say. It's about how you say it. It's kind of like you said with the student loan thing going on right now. It's you know not 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 necessarily opposed to it, but maybe against how how the message was delivered. You know, talk to me a little bit about. You know, some of the travels that you've had just getting to this point of you know, where, where there's different things available now that weren't necessarily around 10, 20 years ago that people just aren't necessarily aware of. Well, uh, I found New Hampshire in the Encyclopedia Britannica. That's how, that's the world I grew up in. Pre-internet, pre-cell phone, pre-all that great stuff. So um, just, uh, again, just read, I did a lot of reading, uh, which is a lost art today. Um, and Agreed. it just it directed me to different people in different places and I network and I like you, I'm a serial network. I love to meet people and, and pick people's brains, try not to act like the smartest person in the room. I do listen a lot. Uh, I call it, you know, you have to have listening ears and eyes. And, uh, you know, that's how many, too many people talk too much and they miss something that someone just said that could change their life forever and opportunities. I've, I've done everything from multi-level marketing to, uh, you know, janitor in the school to working at McDonald's. I've done just about any kind of job you could imagine, uh, taxi cab driver. I mean, you name it, I've done it. And in every job I've ever done, I met somebody along the way that changed my life forever. And just, just, just either through an introduction or, or through a, a tidbit that they threw at me that, that just led me to do different things. And, uh, I take that into my professional life to today. And I think you mentioned earlier in the, in the segment, uh, there are many uh, benefit professionals, insurance professionals that are really, it's almost like doctors that are not up to date. You know, they don't know what's really going on in the industry. 
and you get comfortable in your surroundings and, and you, you forget to keep asking questions and you just take what's there and you're what you're used to and, and you go where you're comfortable. And so and it, yeah, it leads to not thinking really outside the box either. So while, while we're on the topic of changing life forever, way back in high school, and I'm, I'm a Central Jersey guy, that's where I am now, that's where I grew up. But way back in high school, I, a friend's uncle took me to L&B Spumoni Gardens in Bensonhurst, Brooklyn. And I know that's where you grew up, but when we first met, I, <laughs> I threw it out there and you gave me some very interesting feedback on the history of Spumoni Gardens. You want to tell the I audience did. a little I bit? I did. The uh, L&B Spumoni Gardens on Stillwell Avenue in Brooklyn is, uh, was uh, owned by my uncle's brother and his family. Uh, so... Um, it's been there. For, it's been an institution. I worked. There was another job I had. I used to scoop ice cream uh, or the spumoni. Uh, I learned how to make pizza there as well. And uh, it's just, it's just, it's just, uh, you know, it's an amazing. It's an amazing place. It's still there. It's an icon, and uh, I don't think it's family owned any longer. But uh, it's still as good as it always was. And uh, it was just interesting how you brought that up. And you know, here we are. You know, we have we have connection there. To, we didn't know five minutes, you know, a few few days ago. That's what I was talking about. You just never know in life when you listen and, and you, what you may hear. And and it's one of the best deals I ever made with my next door neighbor because we live, you know, about an hour away from there. It's anytime either of us passes it, we pick it up for the neighbor, which is probably the best deal I've ever negotiated you know, behind the scenes moving into my neighborhood. But negotiating behind the scenes, very relevant to what you've been doing as far as helping folks not only come up with custom creative approaches to insurance programs of which there's a lot of different ways to navigate there's also certain components of it it's almost like industry within the industry as sure. far as how it could be navigated so you know talk to us a little bit you know as as we get closer to to the method part of the show here as to you know how the travels have led you in the direction of really being consultative on this topic well like anything else, you know, I grew up in an environment where uh, I learned and watched people do things. And as the baby of four children, I learned very quickly how to avoid trouble and how and how and, and learn from other people's mistakes. And so as I grew into the business, you know, part of my life after the Air Force was great training. And then but then once I got out, I started to, you know, climb the ladder in corporate and meet people and I found out that the best way was to watch what other people were doing. And then if it made sense, steal that idea. Or if it didn't make sense, find a better idea. You know, I have no, <laughs> no pride of ownership. If some if something works and it's working well, you know, go with it until it's not working any longer. And that's the key is that everything works for a little while. Products come and go, people come and go, ideas come and go. It's the it's that person that can see the idea, spot a trend. And then, and then work with that trend and ride that horse for as long as you can until the horse dies. And then you just jump onto another horse. It's, it's the passing horse. So that, that has really helped my journey. And, and I've learned to listen and, and respect other people's ideas, even though I may not agree. Uh, a lot of times I, ha I had a boss who used to tell me, give the dogs the dog food they'll eat, not the one you want to buy. And, uh, and that, was, that was a long time ago. And uh, that's, that, was, that was very helpful in my journey to become very consultative. Being very consultative, absolutely. Being very people first, I think is very big. And it seems like you share the same philosophy. By the way, uh, big fan of the shirt that you're wearing for those who are watching out there in video land. So <laughs> my kids are very into SpongeBob and company. So uh, love it. But you know, the idea of employee advocacy, you know, advocating on behalf of business owners, very big, especially when it relates to healthcare, but also on behalf of the employees too. always an integral part of the of the puzzle, especially when you're talking small, medium sized business because the owners have a lot of aspects where they are employees and having health coverage is definitely one of them that comes up regularly. So, and you know, in your travels as of late, talk, talk to us a little bit just about having the, the focus on the employee advocacy side too has been really helpful in strengthening these relationships. Sure, and like you said, you know, benefit plans also benefit the owners as well. I mean, that's, that's part of the employment, uh, you know, agreement that, you know, benefits cover everybody. Uh, and obviously, Health insurance uh, has changed over the years, gotten more expensive, and it's a huge part of business. Uh, you know, I've seen, you know, the old days with the major med deductibles, a hundred, two hundred dollars. You know, we're in the two, three, four, five thousand dollar deductible range, so it's getting very expensive. So it, it's 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 important to understand the employee side of this because uh, you, you, we're not living in a vacuum. Uh, employees are, especially in today's world, and and I think all of us know that there are what eleven million jobs and not enough people to fill them. So right now it's what they call an employee's market. 
uh, you know, McDonald's is offering signing bonuses. Everybody's offering signing bonuses because they can't get employees. So, uh, you know, a, as an employer, if you want to be a, an employer that people want to work for, you have to provide quality, you know, in addition to quality pay, you know, benefits ranks up there, especially health insurance is usually the number one item for people because it's so expensive. So you have to be able to provide benefits, but you have to also be able to afford them. Uh, you know, I've seen a lot of companies that they just they just can't afford it. And so they just keep ratcheting up deductibles. So in my role, uh, I try to look at what's available. I think I mentioned this earlier to you is that my job as, an, as a trusted advisor is to that wall behind me is to fill it up with ideas. And then we start talking about each idea and we scratch off ones that don't make sense. Because you got to remember, uh, as an owner, you're still an individual, you're still a human being, and you have biases. And there are certain things that, you know, may feel, fit your, your culture, or maybe not even your culture, but your employee culture. You have a, you know, a, a white collar, blue collar workforce, that there's differences, you know, you have younger versus older employees, that there are differences what people need. But health insurance really is, is, is the same in the sense that it covers everybody the same, and you're all subject to it. And so what I try to do is to help control costs for my employers by providing them with the most recent, you know, ideas that are available in the marketplace and, and help them with some cost containment strategies to help lower those costs. And because a lot, a lot of times employee will go to a, a, a pharmacy and make a $10 copay and, and they're, they don't understand that the underlying medication is $800. And so, you right. know, at that point, the, the, the plan is paying the other $790. At some point, that cost has to be borne by somebody. So what happens is, right. you know, uh, it, that comes through in the form of, of decreased benefits and increased costs. And so helping them and understanding their culture and helping them with cost containment is the, the number one item. Because if, if my client can't afford to pay his benefits, I don't have a client. And if his business is not making money, I don't have a client. So it all it all comes together. Yeah, absolutely does. Being people centric, you know, big, big with that, but and also being able to just communicate effectively, which I, I find some struggles in the industry with folks that got licensed a while ago and haven't necessarily kept up with what is available out there. A lot of times they'll have trouble communicating with, with folks, but that's where you come in. We're going to take a quick break, but we'll be right back with Phil Grisafi, Vice President of Business Development at Risk Strategies. Stay with us. Are you a business owner? Do you want to be a business owner? Do you work with business owners? Hi, I'm Stephen Fry, your small and medium-sized business or SMB guy. And I'm the host of the new show, Always Friday. While I love to have fun on my show, we take those Friday feelings of freedom and clarity to discuss popular topics on the minds of SMBs today. Please join me and my various special guests on Friday at 11 a.m. on talkradio.nyc. Are you a conscious co-creator? Are you on a quest to raise your vibration and your consciousness? I'm Sam Leibowitz, your conscious consultant. And on my show, The Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity, we will touch upon all these topics and more. Listen live at our new time on Thursdays at 12 noon Eastern time. That's The Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity, Thursdays, 12 noon on talkradio.nyc. Are you on edge? Hey, we live in challenging, edgy times, so let's lean in. I'm Sandra Bargeman, the host of The Edge of Every Day, which airs each Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time on talkradio.nyc. Tune in live with me and my friends and colleagues as we share stories and perspectives about pushing boundaries and exploring our rough edges. That's The Edge of Every Day on Mondays at 7 p.m. Eastern Time on talkradio.nyc. You're listening to Talk Radio NYC. Uplift, educate, empower. Welcome back, everybody. It's Friday. It's always Friday. 
And it's me, Stephen Fry, your SMB guy. We are chatting with my friend, Phil Grisafi, Vice President of Business Development at Risk Strategies. Before we get into Phil's method behind his madness, I want to take a moment and just sit out by the fire pit and give a quick perspective here. The idea of really being innovative and ever-changing, especially with an industry like insurance and healthcare, along with being people first. You know, everyone wants to save time and money. Phil and I could definitely relate to that. The only issue with it is things start to become very commoditized, especially with insurance, both on the sides of the professionals who work in the space and the end user clients, the SMBs, the businesses that take on the, in, the insurance programs. They can be highly customized. They can be extremely beneficial to both the SMB owners and the employees. However, and I'm sure Phil will agree with this, the C-suite the doesn't always take an interest in these discussions. And a lot of times that'll lead to mainstream only box types of solutions that people find out there where something really highly customized might actually be warranted. You know, bottom line is you need to partner with folks who are people first. Also with folks who've been through the ringer with experience, but welcome the idea of always being educated and ready to take advantage of all the new approaches that are available out there. Things change, products change all the time. We know that. So Phil, this is the method part of the show, method before the madness, the scientific part. This is where we like to talk about what we do, how we do it, and how we go to market for it. So lay it on us. Give us a little bit of how you really differentiate yourselves from other insurance shops out there. Sure. Well, first of all, uh, if you talk to any business owner, they have benefits in place and 90% of them don't even know why. They just have them. They've been told they need them and they have them. They, they don't even know what they have, but they have them. They have benefits, they don't even, a big line item, they don't know what they are. So typically from, from a method perspective, I like to understand what their philosophy is. So I'll, I'll sit down, I do a lot of talking and listening and I'm trying to understand where they're coming from. Try to, they don't even have budgets. They just know that this costs this and they just pay it. And they don't even understand, you know, how it plays into their overall business structure. But I try to, you know, understand their entire business, whether they're a manufacturer or a multi-level marketing company or an auto dealer. You know, what 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 is it? You know, what did, what do they want to get out of a benefit program? Do they need all the benefit programs they have? And so, typically, that's how we start the process: is, is trying to understand what they're what they need and what they want. And then from there, I'll try to provide some some guidance and some ideas. I think I mentioned earlier about putting the ideas on the wall, and yep. uh, then we then we try to break down into what makes sense uh, for your your population. Because again, typically, I, I'll always try to do an age analysis of, of, of a company, try to get an average age to see where they're at, because that does impact what, what I believe, what I should be recommending to them. Sure. Yeah. So, you know, that's all part of that science, that magic behind the scenes stuff is, is really listening and asking probing questions to help them understand what they have. And that that's a huge part of what I do. And then once that happens, then I typically will go back and uh, take all the information and, you know, I have peers, I have other people that I work with and, uh, and, you know, I respect a lot of other people. And I listen to their ideas and we'll, we'll throw stuff around. And then mm -hmm. I'll try to come up with some sort of, uh, you know, a couple of different scenarios and recommendations for clients and sit down again and, and go through them with them and, and try to see what makes sense, sense for them. Uh, you know, right now, uh, buzzwords in our industry, I think you mentioned, uh, you know, earlier about cost containment. Uh, there's uh, uh, companies out there that basically will help you with cost containment in, in prescription drugs. And uh, companies like Rx Valet is one of them. And uh, I use them with, with, I've used them for a couple of years now with a couple of clients and, and the money has been significant. I think you, you quoted one of my clients earlier uh, uh, about saving the money and, and you know, they're on track to this year out of a million one spend, they're going to save 200 grand on, on just on the pharmacy alone by the RX Valet. So the, the point is, is that there, there, there are all kinds of, of things you can do. There are other companies uh, out there that do this, but, uh, you know, we vet those and we try to do it. You know, you got a good RX, you see, you know, people on television with the cards and all this great stuff. That's purely a discount program. That's not insurance. Some people without insurance like it. Some people with insurance like it, but then it doesn't count towards your insurance deductibles or their co-pays. So you got you to know what you have. And that's part of where we do a bad job in terms of educating uh the employer and the employees, because again, part of this, once we, the, the method piece, once we get the employer to agree on a strategy, well, now we got to communicate it to the employees. And, and usually it's a one, uh, you know, you hear this word open enrollment uh, employee, you know, do an employee meeting, you know, have 800 people in a room. We do one meeting for an hour and then we expect them to become, you know, benefit experts. And, uh, you know, <laughs> 
what I require or I, what I always ask of my clients is to allow me on site quarterly or, or Zoom quarterly to, to just reinforce the benefit programs, how to use it. Because I think you mentioned earlier about something about submitting a claim. Most people forget to submit claims. You yep. have these, these great insurance programs. And unless it's a direct bill, like, like an office visit, most times you have to file a claim. And most yep. people don't. So yep. part of what I do is try to educate the employee on how to how to get the max, maximize the benefits that they do have. So that that's a huge part of, of the method behind the madness. Yeah, I I, uh, I I personally like the term cost containment because a lot of times some of this discussion gets gets positioned as expense reduction, mm -hmm. and I think when it gets positioned that way, it just go, falls into the commoditized bucket of I'm just looking for the cheapest price. All right. Well, the cheapest price isn't necessarily going to get you to where you want to go. Cost containment to me is, you know, it might be semantics to some people, but you're really looking at a strategy that's going to work for the employer, for the employees, for both sides of the table and really deliver exactly what everybody's looking for. And that differs from company to company. Right. You're not going to save your business by pulling out light bulbs and, and cutting your electric bill. Right. I mean, that, that's that's why I try to, that's an analogy I like to use similar to what you're mentioning. You know, you're focusing on the wrong stuff. You know, I always tell my owners or my clients, uh, whether it's the HR manager or the owner, because I deal with a lot of owners as well. And I always explain to them that, you know, what, what, do you, what is your annual sales and what is your annual profit? And then you look at the medical plan. I, well, I, I made a conversion a client five years ago to, to uh, a, a different type of product, a reference-based type product. And uh, their, their savings in the medical plan was more money than they, they made after, after tax in their, in their company. <laughs> that that's how crazy it was. and wow. so you know they thanked me they even actually paid me more money that year i mean they actually were so thrilled uh because we saved them so much money and so you know sometimes you just have to really focus in on what's important and not get lost with the with, in the weeds with, with stuff that's not important everything's important to some degree but th some things are much more important and so what i tend to do is try to focus on the really important items that i you know believe that at least the stuff that i can impact because i can't impact everybody's I can only impact the piece of the, of the world that I work in. So, you know, in, in both of our travels, right, you mentioned RX Valet. I've seen numerous companies like RX Valet, but something like good RX, like I've seen that at the cash register, on TV, every, a lot of people out there can relate to it. And really, it's just it just comes down to a, a difference in marketing. It's like you know, marketing. It's like, hey, this is a discount program. It's like everybody who's you know got a pulse can get this card, grab this card, you save some money. So everybody's kind of familiar with it. But you know, looking at some of the other types of solutions, like an RX valet, there is really kind of strategizing with the C-suite, with the business owners, learning the, the culture of the business, learning the employee base a little bit, and you know, not doing something that's kind of synchronous with the insurance program that they that they have. Is that you know, is that 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 really sum it up in a nutshell? Yeah, it really does. And, and the nice part about an RX LA or, or or a lot of cost containment strategies we use, a lot of those are behind the scenes type things that most employees never see. Or it doesn't impact them, but it impacts them. it does impact them from a cost perspective. And in some cases, it actually it actually provides better value to the employee because, like with RX Valet, they have a concierge type service that they actually interface with the employees instead of employees going to the met, the stuff is mailed to their home. They have a nurse that calls them up and follows up, so the experience is better uh, than just going down to your local CVS or Walgreens and just you know getting your prescription and walking home. So again, some of these things uh, are not as not intrusive at all. And, and they provide, you know, some really good back end type savings for the employer without a lot of, you know, stuff up front. Right. Yeah, I think that's big because when when people, business owners especially, and their employees feel some changes up front, everybody gets a little skittish and apprehensive. Things are going to change. I have to learn something new. And you know, really if it's mostly a back end change and you know there's a there's a card that you got to use, that's that's really not intrusive at all. And also with respect to RX Valet, there are many vendors that do that. I, I'm just using RX Valet today because I've had some good experience. And they and their and their model for for those business owners that are listening is that uh, they 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 charge a per member per month fee as opposed to a percentage of savings. So there are a lot of companies out there. Mm -hmm. For instance, I'll just use some some simple math. A drug maybe a hundred thousand dollar drug. Uh, they'll company A will say, okay, we're gonna we'll get you that drug, and but we want thirty percent of the savings. That's their fee for that particular drug. And so a hundred thousand dollar drug. They save you whatever they save you. They get 30% of that savings. You don't get it all. You get a piece of it. It sounds fair, but 
it's could be a big chunk. You could you could be seeing right. big chunks of money going to these providers, which yeah, they saved you the money, but but the the RX valet method or any other method, I always believe in what they call the P uh, per employee per month method, where yes. you basically they charge you a flat fee, so you're not gouging anybody, and everybody everybody feels like you know they're winning. And so those are the kind of things you need to look at. Again, this gets back to the method again, studying the, the different various options that are available. Because I think, as Steve had mentioned earlier in the program, there are there are so many RX valets out there, so many vendors out there. Everybody is, you know, the vendor of the week, whatever you want to call them, all doing the same thing. And you really have to do your homework and do what's best for your client. And that's why I said you you ride the horses, and then when the horse is starting to run out of gas, you jump onto the next horse because, you know, a few years from now, it could be somebody else. And if you just think, that, you know, you're going to ride that horse forever, it doesn't work that way. And, it's, uh, a, it's actually a good segue into the madness coming up after this break because uh, RX Valet for pets too. So I, I'm definitely curious about that as I have a dog who's got some particular needs and a little crazy to boot. But we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back with Phil Grisafi, Vice President of Business Development at Risk Strategies. Stay with us, everybody. Franklin McElroy, host of the new podcast, Gateway to the Smokies. It airs on talkradio.nyc every Tuesday night from 6 p.m. to 7. Every episode is dedicated to memorable experiences in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park and surrounding areas. This show features experts and locals who expound upon the richness of culture, history, and adventure that awaits you in the Smokies. Tune in every Tuesday from 6 p.m. to 7 on talkradio.nyc. Are you passionate about the conversation around racism? Hi, I'm Reverend Dr. TLC, host of the Dismantle Racism Show, which airs every Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern on talkradio.nyc. Join me and my amazing guests as we discuss ways to uncover, dismantle, and eradicate racism. That's Thursdays at 11 o'clock a.m. on talkradio.nyc. Are you a small business trying to navigate the COVID-19 related employment laws? Hello, I'm Eric Sauber, employment law business law attorney and host of the new radio show, Employment Law Today. On my show, we'll have guests to discuss the common employment law challenges business owners are facing during these trying times. Tune in on Tuesday evenings from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern time on talkradio.nyc. You're listening to Talk Radio NYC at www.talkradio.nyc. Now broadcasting 24 hours a day. Welcome back to Always Friday with me, Stephen Fry, your SMB guy. We're chatting with my friend, Phil Grisafi, Vice President of Business Development at Risk Strategies. We're getting a little bit into the madness now, the artistic observational view, the stories that Phil has from the field, being an insurance professional and helping to navigate things with a people-first, people-centric type of approach, learning the culture of the business to best advocate. So again, Phil, no story too taboo. Anything goes. Obviously, we don't want to compromise client confidentiality. Totally understood. When, you know, one thing I hear from people these days is they think that they're going to get experience expense reduction and cost containment strategies in this type of space with the prescription drugs by going directly to the drug companies or by having the doctors try to advocate for them. I don't think it really works that way at this point. And you care to care to comment on that? Sure. Um, basically, what happens is uh, that that comes about because you see on television, if you have trouble paying for your medication, you can contact the manufacturer directly and they may be able to help you out. Uh, it's it's a tedious process, but like a company like an RX Valet and and their, and their competitors actually it's called pres prescription assistance program. Every manufacturer has that arm that basically if if you're in, you fall into an income category where you can't afford your medications, they'll they'll actually provide it to you at a either reduced cost or for free. So that's that that is that is something that's doable, but it's not it's not as just as easy as picking up a, a you know a, a phone and making a call. And that's where, you know, that's another part of what these companies do uh, to advocate on behalf of the employees. We talked about employee advocacy, you know, advocacy late, earlier. So that is definitely something 
that can be done. Right, right, right. There's uh, you know, there was a lot of speculation during the pandemic, and rightfully so, that you know, insurance rates in general, just because of COVID, were going to go through the roof. And you know, some of that sort of happening, some still remains to be seen. But as far as the way certain areas of the business were treated and things that might have come about from the pandemic, there might have been some some positive movement to help along. You know, being able to put together a savings program, a cost containment strategy for prescription drugs. The, can you, can you tell us a little bit more about sure. that? Sure. A lot of it uh, with the, with these, the, with these cost containment, you know, uh, prescription programs is now uh, because of the pandemic, uh, they loosened the, the laws on reimportation of, you know, med medications from overseas. So a lot of these companies can source their medications a lot less expensive. Unfortunately, as you know, Americans pay the highest price for prescription drugs. Uh, and so, you know, if we can get them from Canada and, and you can always, you can always do that through the internet, but now it's, now it's, it's becoming more and more, it's easier now. Uh, so the pandemic has definitely helped that. Um, and the new legislation, what they call the, uh, was it the Inflation Reduction Act? I think that's what they call it. Um, you know, they're finally giving Medicare the ability to negotiate uh, some, med some, you know, prescription drug prices, which really does make sense. Uh, I, you know, this, Bill has been in, 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 in existence for 19 years. And after that, finally, now they're giving him the ability to negotiate. But the, the, the problem with that's going to happen now is the government's the largest payer. So they're, they're the biggest, you know, they're going to be the biggest elephant in the room. So right. what's going to happen is typically, as you know, it's like everything else when you, you raise taxes or whatever, uh, that has to be passed on to somebody. Uh, sure, even yeah. Student loan debt, someone's going to have to pay for it, you know. I see these memes on, on the internet, like all oh, these people complaining about, you know, the cost of lettuce and the cost of everything. And they're like, <laughs> well, we got all, when you got all that free money from this, from the, uh, you know, the pandemic relief acts between the different administrations, someone has to pay for that. So that's where, you know, inflation, everything rears its ugly head. So you, you may have gotten a free sandwich yesterday, but now you're going to have to pay for it today. It's the old, you know, what, Popeye Wimpy, remember? I'm glad, <laughs> glad, glad, glad they pay you Wednesday for a hamburger today. Hamburger today. today. Yeah, that was it. <laughs> so, so, you know, the reality is, is that the pandemic has has uh, allowed the, the government to become more involved in, in passing legislation to try to help people with their care and, and you know, it, it with COBRA extensions and, and COBRA subsidies uh, for people that, you know, lost their coverage and things like that. So there has been some good things with respect to the pandemic. But, but again, uh, to answer your question directly about the cost and, and is that only insurers now are, are, what they are what including in their cost is what they call a COVID adjustment. And what, what's happened is, and, and we've seen the data, a, a large segment of my clients are self-funded, so I actually get to see claims data. Mm -hmm. And what, what's happening now is that, and I, you'll, you could read studies on the, in the Wall Street Journal or any kind of medical publication, is that because people couldn't go to a doctor for a year or two, uh, they're finding more and more later stage cancers now because people didn't go for their screenings. So now when you went in, you did find it was early. Now you've seen a lot more two, three, and four stages of cancer. So those are going to be expensive to treat now and, and people may not survive them. So the cost ultimately will start to rear its ugly head again. But that is, you know, that's, that was the, the dark side of the pandemic was the, the, sh the shutdown of all the elective surgeries and the, and, and the, and the visits and everything. So you know, insurance companies are for-profit organizations, and and they're not in they're not in the charity business, even though they tend to make believe they are at <laughs> times. But uh, you know, they have to pay for stuff as well. So. When you were talking about the prescription drugs coming from Canada and from overseas, and and now you know the government having having some you know regulation legislation that's a little bit more favorable for it, all I could think of was back like fifteen twenty years ago to the Sopranos episode where they're like, oh, we get this many pills of Fosamax from Canada, and just like now, and that's actually something that's that's done from the right channels where things yeah. could actually be be really sustainable moving forward, where people can have some good savings and good cost containment with their programs. So. And, we're see and we are seeing that, which is nice. And that's, I said, with, with, with the cost contained programs, uh, you know, we're actually seeing significant dollar savings. And I'm seeing you, you put the RX valet for pets up there. There are, there are programs out there now because medications for animals have, have, you know, skyrocketed like crazy. Oh yeah, and I, so I, I lost my, my buddy of 16 years at the beginning of the pandemic, Wilson, like un unbelievable, but had him a good long time. We got this new guy, Samson, who's a uh, mini Bernadoodle crossed with a mini Golden Doodle, and he's got some crazy food sensitivities. Yeah, I know it sounds crazy. It's it's actually a mini Golden Mountain Doodle, technically. It's a fancy mutt, is basically what it is. Mm -hmm. 
but the uh you know this he's had food sensitivities he's got weird prescriptions going on like for years in in our world you know the industry people have asked me of things like flexible spending accounts like can i put away money for my out-of-pocket expenses with my pets and the answer is no but nowadays more and more people are getting pet insurance including myself because this knucklehead has all kinds of specific needs. So, you know, talk to us a little bit about this. Like, has this been a big topic of conversation with cost containment in this world? Yes. Uh, matter of fact, pet insurance is one of the fastest growing benefits. Uh, a lot of companies are starting to offer it. And I think what I mentioned earlier about getting consultative and figuring out what the populations are, you know, a lot of the younger uh, populations are, you know, clamoring for this type of, of, of benefit because they usually are the ones that have the pets. And, right. uh, you know, and, and older people have them as well. But you know, there's a lot more younger people moving through the system now than, than than there are older people that are dying out. And so it's becoming a more and more of a mainstream benefit. So uh, I have a lot of my clients that that do offer it um, to their employees. So again, that's just something that is is definitely uh, on the radar. And, you know, if you don't ask the right questions, you, you can never come up with the right answer. And that, that's part of this, that whole consultative discussion we've had during, the, during our time together here. Yep. And in the spirit of keeping things as smooth and friendly on the front end for the user experience, you know, one thing that I've personally seen a lot of requests around is the idea of not only having coverage for pets and having ancillary benefits for pets, but being able to automate the premiums and claims process as much as possible. You're obviously going to always have to touch the claim somehow in some way, but you know, a lot of times people want it funded by way of payroll deduction. Mm -hmm. So I see that being a big, a big deal as well, like through the employers, through the SMBs, like this is how we get this stuff going. Yeah, it just becomes another line item on your check, another deduction, like a 401k or your medical deduction. A lot of my employers do offer payroll deduction to make it as easy as possible. Uh, obviously, um, depending on the size of the business, the smaller businesses tend to just want their employees to do direct billing because they don't, they don't have the resources to do it. So it really, it really gets down to the, to the client on how, how they want to handle it. Again, these get always back to this conversation of asking the right questions and, and, and hopefully getting to the right answer. So not, on, not only that, which definitely are out about the right fact finding, getting to know the people first and the culture of the business, but also thinking in terms of businesses that might not have necessarily been having this discussion 10, 20, 30 years ago. And I go back to some of your family history of l and Spumoni Gardens, not, not just because I'm hungry and I want <laughs> pizza, which I am, but you know, this type of, this type of world with restaurant hospitality and leisure, you know, when you talk about self-level funded insurance plans, and you talk about you know, uh, captives and things like this, like a lot of times restaurant hospitality leisure groups, especially if they're growing quickly and they have national franchising capabilities, they're the ones a lot of times that, that can have some great conversations in this space. But you know, again, if the broker or professional in question that they've been leaning on doesn't keep up with this, doesn't take continuing professional education credits around these topics and just kind of wings box solutions, they might not be getting the best bang for their buck. Would you agree? Hundred percent. And by the way, I'm, I'm I will be in Staten Island this weekend, so I'll be shooting over to LMB, uh, having some pizza this weekend while I'm down there. Well, I'm I'm heading to South Jersey. Otherwise, I would uh, be absolutely there with you immediately. <laughs> Um, it's you know totally the type of pizza that I freeze like you know, if we're, if I don't eat the whole thing, I get extra. Oh, yeah. It's like a week oh, or two yeah. later, still the best pizza around. Like if I eat it up, but. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, but you know, in addition to you know some great you know testimonials for for you personally, just RX Valet, you know some some great reviews out there just around the idea of having the concierge like type of service, something that's not just a card that anybody breathing could get at the register, something that takes a little bit more strategy and know how to integrate into the world. You know what? You know as as we close out this segment and we head to the the big finish of the message part of the show. Yeah. You know what what kind of what kind of how would you wrap this up as far as the madness goes around? this topic and yeah, you know, where we, where our heads kind of need to be at moving forward with all of this well I, I think to wrap it up i would say have an open mind uh you know and pick the right advisor pick someone that's gonna that's gonna push you a lot of times advisors are, are tend to be afraid of their clients because they, they think they're going to lose business and to me you're doing a disservice to your to your potential client or a client if you're not asking the hard questions because uh, business owners need to know, they need to understand that this is this big money involved here, and so they they need to be given at least the you know what what's available to them. It's like the biggest thing, and this is not on my side of the insurance, but when you get into uh, home insurance or car insurance, which very very rarely used, it's not a, it's not a transactional business, but 
the worst time to find out that something's not covered is when your house burned down. And then all of a sudden <laughs> yeah. you, you pull out the contract, all of a sudden this wasn't covered, that wasn't covered. And it's, it's just, and there's no, no, no recourse at that point. So that's why it's important that you ask all the questions on the front end and you have the right advisor that understands the marketplace. That, that's, yeah. that's in a nutshell. Yeah, and either side should not be skittish around asking the the hard questions with worries of premiums going to increase somehow for some reason. Totally agree. We're going to take a quick break, but we will be right back with Phil Grisafi, Vice President of Business Development at Risk Strategies. Stay with us. Hey, everybody. It's Tommy D, the nonprofit sector connector coming at you from my attic. Each week here on TalkRadio.nyc, I host a program, Philanthropy in Focus. Nonprofits impact us each and every day, and it's my focus to help them amplify their message and tell their story. Listen each week at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time until 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on TalkRadio.nyc. In a post-COVID world, you may have many unanswered questions regarding your health. Are you looking to live a healthier lifestyle? Do you have a desire to learn more about mental health and enhance your quality of life? Or do you just want to participate in self-understanding and awareness? I'm Frank R. Harrison, host of Frank About Health, and each Thursday, I will tackle these questions and work to enlighten you. Tune in every Thursday at 5 p.m. on talkradio.nyc, and I will be Frank About Health to advocate for all of us. Calling all pet lovers, Pet Avengers, assemble! On the Professionals and Animal Lovers show, we believe the bond between animal lovers is incredibly strong. It mirrors that bond between pets and their owners. Through this program, we come together to learn, educate, and advocate. Join us live every Wednesday at 2 p.m. at talkradio.nyc. You're listening to Talk Radio NYC at www.talkradio.nyc. Now broadcasting 24 hours a day. Welcome back to Always Friday with me, Stephen Fry, your SMB guy. We are chatting with Phil Grisafi, Vice President of Business Development at Risk Strategies. Some awesome tidbits from Phil here today. Really hope you guys were taking notes and listening. If not, you could always come back and listen to this again. And please do, obviously. But the uh, messaging part of the show is how we're going to round everything out. The whole idea here, Phil, from Weekend Insight to Monday Impact, you've given everybody some great food for thought here today. You know, I just a couple of quick thoughts that I had from my side. Don't fall into the trap of being commoditized. Many insurance professionals do that. And again, like I, I think of it also in terms of the words expense reduction. I'm gonna try to find you the cheapest price on whatever we're doing. You really have to align with the people and the processes who can help you differentiate from the competition and provide some freaking value. There's all kinds of value to be provided with discussions like this nowadays. But Phil, I know you're a big never quit guy. So lay it on us. What's some of your quick sound bites to send everyone home for the weekend and me on vacation? So basically, I'm, I'm standing between you and your vacation, but uh, before the break, you mentioned about increasing premiums, and you, you can't be afraid, like, if, if someone's going to get a 20% rate increase, and it's justified, then, it, it, then you have to be willing to just put it out there and not be afraid. A lot of yeah. people are afraid, and so, you know, I've never been afraid to deliver the bad news. It's just, it's just part of life. It's not all, you know, roses and candies. So I just wanted to clarify that one. As far as as far as wrapping up, I, I think in terms of something that you may remember, want to try to remember, because like you said, about now was it just a little bit afternoon? It's pretty much five o'clock somewhere. So everyone's going to be, you know, starting to think about the the boat or wherever they're going on vacation in the next few hours, and they're going to just forget about everything. But the things that you should remember and just these three little tidbits: don't quit, don't ever quit. And just keep, if you can remember anything today, just remember that. And by by don't quitting, I mean, never give up and always follow ideas until you hit a, a real roadblock. And then then you just try to find another idea because there's, there's always an answer to a question. It's just a matter of how far you want to take it. So just don't quit. Life is not all Spumoni Gardens pizza is the best yeah, way even, I would put though, it. Even though I'm jealous right now, staring at one, I can't wait. I can't wait for this weekend to eat some, but I'm looking <laughs> right too. at the pie, man. I'm all excited. 
I'm excited for you. I'm going to live vicariously through you while I'm trying to soak All in right. some beach and sun time. But, you know, one thing that you said along the way is you know, insurance is the vehicle to transfer risk. And I think that's an important discussion and point because a lot of times from the insurance professionals, in addition to clients, it's it's just a product. It's a particular solution that's out there to them. So it's just you know jam them into whichever one's going to make sense. And, and a lot of times it's a it's a hail mary desperation discussion too, where kind of like you said, people are afraid to deliver the bad news if there's a twenty percent increase. But it's it, it, in the act of staying away from it and trying to jam something that doesn't fit, they're not really learning the business and learning the the, the people, and they're not learning what might be the best fit for them and how to best communicate it. It's just, it, it kind of makes a mess of everything to think of it that way. Well, I, I, I'll probably be the, the least insurance prof type. I, I don't sell insurance. I sell ideas. And, right. and to me, less insurance is best, believe it or not. Even though I get paid to sell insurance, less insurance is best. That's why I love self-funding medical clients that are, that are of the size that could do that because they control, they control the opportunity, they control the cash, they control the plan designs. They have more control. Less money you give to the insurance companies, the better off you are. Programs that promise dividends, you, anytime you get a dividend in insurance, you've overpaid. That's the only way they can give, give you money back. You've <laughs> right. overpaid. My clients would rather have their dividends on the front end. They'd rather not pay it. And that's, that's, so that, that's, a, that's a big, that's, a, no, that's another take, take, home, take home. Keep as much of your money in your pocket as possible. Give as least you can to the insurance companies because you can, you can do better. It's like taxes. You can do better with your money than the government can do. It's not that they're, they're bad, they're bad people, whatever. It's just that they're just so big and such bloated that they, they just, they don't know what they're doing. You know, it's important to you. And I think the, the last takeaway I want to give people is, is really be humble. Just remember that when you're talking to people and listening, listen properly. Don't be looking at your phone. Don't be, you know, turning your head. Listen to what people have to say, because like I said, early in my career, I learned from people just little stupid things. You know, my dad used to say bulls and bears make money. Pigs get slaughtered. You know, <laughs> things like that that are stuck in my mind since I was this high, you know, just little tidbits that can really impact your life. So just be humble and listen. And the biggest piece of that is be willing to pivot. Your idea may be the best idea at the moment. But man, once this gut starts to go south, if you're going to be wedded to an idea that's going down the tube, you're going with it. So try to pivot and be ready to jump off that horse. I could keep going back. I grew up around horses. I used to go to a track <laughs> while my Uncle Jimmy, the, the uh, LMB guy. And we, used to, and we used to go to trotters and yonkers and everything back in the day. You've got to be ready to jump into another horse if your horse is about to die. So th those would be my takeaways. I hope people just really understand that and i'm i'm honored and privileged to have been on your show and i hope people at least learn something uh, and and walk away with at least some good tidbits i love the idea of bulls and bears make money and pigs get slaughtered because like all right so you got to get greedy when other folks are getting fearful and you got to get fearful when other folks are getting greedy it's kind of a warren buffett thing and mm -hmm. the bulls and bears make money people think of it as bulls good bears bad but it's bulls make money now bears make money later that's the way it is that's that's our system <laughs> so thank you so much for for coming on the show with me phil today i really appreciate it i think the topics are very important one for both like i said insurance professionals and clients alike i know you feel the same way uh you can get in touch with F phil via me throw your phone number out there for everybody because i know you'll, you'll love to do it that way sure 603-496-2029 I'm available 24 7 Absolutely. That's the best way to find me these days is by cell phone, by text. It's too, too many freaking emails these days. Yeah. Be before I uh, let you go for the day and uh, before I go on vacation, I would love to share the answers to the questions that I asked you about your favorite movie or TV show character, your favorite movie or TV show, and your favorite musical instrument and the artist who you'd, you'd like to hear play it. So without further ado, your favorite movie char character was Harry Callahan from Dirty Harry. I, th I think everyone can uh, visualize... <laughs> Clint Eastwood doing this type of role. <laughs> Go ahead, make my day. But Madman calling himself the Scorpio Killer, menaces the city, tough as nails cop, dirty Harry Callahan, decide to track down and ferret out the crazy psychopath. The world of insurance is, can definitely be a dirty world for sure, but you, wanna, you want a professional that can not only hold your hand, but show you some of the newer ways to navigate the industry. So, you know, Clint Eastwood's always good at thinking on his feet with fresh tactics and intimidating the hell out of everybody so uh your favorite movie you said was gladiator 
Foreman Roman, former Roman general sets out to exact his revenge against the corrupt emperor who murdered his family and sent him into slavery. Couldn't help but notice the kind of relationship and analogy here as we're talking about helping people who feel like slaves to insurance companies and drug companies strategize just a little bit better about how to combat the costs and really how to be as effective as possible for, for the population of their business. Kind of feels like Maximus going up against Emperor Commodus a little bit. I can't, I can't help but make that conclusion. It's a good one. <laughs> But uh, as far as the music goes, and I know music's important to you as it is to me as well, you had uh, mentioned the saxophone and you said your dad. So it's, it strikes a, strikes a chord with me. My dad's a guitar guy and I'm a saxophone player, but my grandfather was a jazz musician and he, he played damn near everything. But not sure which sax player reminds you the most of your dad, but uh, the most common musician people drop on me is Kenny G, obviously. <laughs> but uh, what's, what other instruments did he play? Uh, the clarinet, piano, flute, piccolo. That's enough. <laughs> couldn't I, I would sing, couldn't, couldn't sing worth crap, but he can play an instrument. <laughs> the saxophone and the piano was for me. I really wish I kept up with it at this point, but that's, I, that's uh... my dad right there. That, that's <laughs> I was gonna say, I thought I thought I found him. But uh, once again, thank you so much for joining me here today. This is this is important stuff. Great topic of conversation. People need to be aware of their options, both on the uh, trusted advisor insurance professional side, as well as the end user business owner and the employee side of things. It's not just about what you see in marketing and on billboards and on commercials and at the cash register in the pharmacy. When you see those little good RX advertisements, there is a little bit more thought that can go into it. So coming up next week, we're going to talk about shifting perceptions through performance with my new friend. Friend, Adrian Clancy, Executive Director of Clancy Works Dance Company. This is a nonprofit that's on a phenomenal mission to provide the dance experience to folks who don't necessarily have the means to afford it. I can relate at this point having two daughters because I think dance is costing me around $1,000 per month between the two of them, but uh, that's a topic for another day's discussion. Until then, thank you for joining us on Always Friday. We hope you gain some weekend insight to make a Monday impact. Have a great weekend, everyone. We will see you next week, Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern time right here on talkradio.myc. Take care, everyone. Thank you again.